Hi, I'm Cynthia Schiller. Please like and subscribe. We're going to talk about 10 different ways that the narcissist uses some manipulation tactics to kind of control us. Because I know sometimes we feel that something is off and we're trying to understand exactly what's going on. That's where that crazy making comes in. A lot of us uh, aren't quite exactly sure if our narcissist is a true narcissist. There's a difference between selfish people and narcissists. You have to have five out of nine traits. If you want to see my video on that, um, it, it's explains it a little bit different but narcissists love to gaslight and it's extremely uh, destructive toxic and so when you're uh, gaslighted you start to feel uncomfortable and you know something isn't quite right something toxic just happened and um maybe we hear that didn't happen or you imagined it or they tell us we're crazy um so we've been lied to and we start to doubt ourselves we start to reflect back like did this really happen uh and then we're like i know it did and and um so it's very manipulative and when you keep getting this over and over again it starts to alter our sense of reality. That's why a lot of you feel off. Um, you don't know which end is up. You start getting mind fog, brain fog, and this self-doubt will start to eat away at us and we'll start to you know, lose the trust in ourselves. We'll start to feel crazy. And, um, you know, uh, it disables us from, you know, how we react. We start, um, you know, just being so confused. And, you know, do we call out? their abusive tactics because they keep telling us adamantly that we're imagining it. So um, they also do projecting of negative feelings onto us. So uh, it's a defense mechanism. They put their responsibility of their negative behavior and traits right back onto us because the narcissist doesn't want to admit that anything about them is wrong. So if they're um, angry, or whatever is going on in them. They'll project their feelings onto us. And um, the narcissist, they, they just start to create their own world. That, that's where the lies come in. Um, the narcissist, uh, you know, they just believe that they can manipulate everything, be the master of uh, what reality really is, what this fake facade is. They try so hard to keep it um, real in their minds. And as soon as things like reality hits them, uh, they need these defense mechanisms um, because they have an altered sense at looking at things. And that's a defense mechanism from their childhood. They also have brain damage, so they can't really think empathetically uh you know they're, they're stuck in a childlike state and um, they'll start saying things like you're ruining my day um you know they get mad at us for for silly little things and what's really hard is you know when uh you know they, they abuse us and that's when they come right back with you know kind of like the most love we get is if we just got hit or yelled at that um you know, after an explosive whatever, that's when you get the I'm sorry, I love you. Uh, they'll even turn it around on you like you made me do that, as opposed to owning it up. So their apologies are empty. And um, they love to use word salads where they mix everything up. Um, that's one of their favorite things to do too. So if you ever disagree with them, um, or challenge them any anyway, they'll start to give you circular conversations. Uh, whether it's conversations, arguments, um, projection, they'll start to gaslight us, to disorient us, keep us off track. And I think you guys have felt that in your relationship. Like, how do I break the cycle? We start walking on eggshells. Um, it's nonsensical conversations. Um, they often erupt into arguments because they start to get frustrating. And the narcissist uses this to confuse us, frustrate us, disorient us. Um, a lot of times, too, uh, they use a, a manipulation tactic where um, they, they get us exhausted. So sometimes it's late at night. They won't let us go to bed without, you know, finishing the argument um, th that they keep it going. You, you know, you should finish an argument before you go to sleep, but in a healthy way. Um, but they keep it going. Instead of resolving it, they keep it going. And once you get so tired, um, you're just like, I just have to give up. Um, they trick us into saying yes or agreeing to things that we wouldn't normally do. Normally, we would take a stand on things. And that's where the codependency starts coming in is, um, 
you know, we feel so afraid of losing this person. Uh, we got that Stockholm syndrome. We're addicted to our abuser and it's because of all the stuff that they have put us through they love to nitpick um they'll change the game up on us new goals all of a sudden um they just keep changing what we've agreed to uh, and they also back out of things so uh you know uh they want us to dress for them cook for them work on ourselves all the time uh you know and it's like they want us in a good mood but then they knock it down so it's so off balance. Um, so a lot of times, uh, you know, we start getting confused and anxious and we start working harder for the narcissist approval, validation. Um, it starts to turn into all about them. And, and, and they uh, use um, the poor pity me or certain word patterns to get us uh, focusing on them, which is exactly what they want. They want us basically to give our soul over to them um to just be an object almost like robotic to where we should know what they want we should do what they want we should forget all of our needs um and just focus on them they have the strong disease uh, desire for chaos um because that's fueling what they need they're very uh uncomfortable at rest when they're at rest their brain chem um in uh chemicals like start uh their brain waves start going high speed and and it's uncomfortable for them when they lie it soothes them so it's almost you know like they need to lie to feel okay um they hate taking um uh credit for doing bad things uh they won't hold accountability but um they often pick nitpick for no particular reason you're like where is this coming from and it's just because they're at rest and that's when you know we would think that we would be at peace so if you guys could comment below when i was with my narcissist as soon as things got better that's when they fell apart because they can't stay in that state of things are good um and that's why if you see uh you know if you guys could let me know when you got married how long did it take for things to start changing um whether you stayed married or not but when when was the devaluation because a lot of times in marriages or if you finally move in together that's when things fall apart and that's when it should flourish you should be like we're finally committed we're finally doing this we're going through life together and it should at least be at the even keel if not better but at least what you were used to or expected um agreed to but all of a sudden you're like i'm kind of locked into this and and you know some of you financially are the narcissist will often um uh especially male female and the tr traditional roles um you know, you think they're like, no, oh, that's so sweet. They want me to stay home with the kids and I can be mommy. And they do that. Um, so you don't have a source of friends. You don't have temptations. Um, you also don't have the money to leave. And so they're not being nice. They're just making sure that their needs are secure, locked down. Um, they will often misrepresent, misrepresent the things that we say to them, change the way our opinions are interpreted, our feelings are not validated. So they know our triggers and toxic people will presume they know what we're thinking or feeling. Um, and since they're so negative on the inside, the way they twist it around will be negative. So you can have a positive thought and it'll come out negative in their mind. They'll process it a different way. Um, and it just kind of triggers their reactions. Um, they don't really evaluate what is going on. They don't evaluate what is being said. They'll put words in our mouths. Um, they'll feel that we have bad intentions, ulterior motives. Um, and you know, they'll even accuse us of thinking that they're the toxic person um, when we're just trying to communicate with them. But they do, they give us toxicity, but we're not even talking about that, but they put it on them, uh, on us. It's that vulnerable narcissist. Um, it, it It's just a preemptive form of defense for them. They'll kind of reframe what we're saying. So it sounds like we're, you know, off the, off the wall crazy. Um, and uh 
you know, they'll say like, oh, so I'm the bad one when we're just trying to communicate. We're not trying to put blame. We'll even say, you know, um, you know, in a kind way, like I, I'm not mad, but I just da da da. You know, can we correct this or talk about it? And they instantly take the bad out of it. They won't hear what you are saying that, you know, I'm not mad. They'll hear, um, you know, but can you take the trash out? Whatever. So I'm not mad you didn't do it, but can you take the trash out? And then they're thinking about this, that they didn't do something, that they suck, that they don't know how to handle certain situations. And we're just trying to communicate. Um, they'll often change the subject. So we feel unsettled um, because it's like a smoke screen that they're doing. Um, they don't want to talk about what we're talking about because sometimes they have to take accountability or they have to take time uh, away from what they want to do. Maybe they want to play video games or talk to their buddy or, you know, I don't know, go for a walk, whatever they want to do. They will change the subject and um, nothing is ever summed up sometimes it's just you know one or two minute conversation and you both have a great day the rest of the day but instead you know they put it off so now we're anxious because it's something that's unsettling to us so we're waiting till the next day and then we're like when do we bring it up should we bring it up now and then we do bring it up and then it's put off again or then an argument starts and by continuing these arguments or uh, silent treatments that they'll give us um it's, it's this never ending roller coaster of highs and lows in these narcissistic relationships. They love to smear talk. Often they'll stalk um, because they want that supply and they'll ad ad deliberately abuse us, use our angry actions against us. So if we get angry, which is reactive abuse, that they start using it against us. We're starting to pick up some of their traits. We're starting to mirror them. And when they smear us, um, it sabotages our reputation, slanders who we are, and it destroys our support network that we need to fall back on. Um, they can do it to our, you know, smear us to um, pretty much anybody, anybody in your circle that you could go to. Uh, you, you feel like you have no, nowhere to turn now. So the only person in your life is your abuser because you know, everybody else is looking at you like you're crazy and you try to communicate what you said. Um, and I have an interesting thing. It was a today is April Fool's. That's kind of coincidence. Um, an April Fool's joke that they told me that my teacher was pregnant. Um, thin lady, um, not a perfect belly, but definitely not a bad belly. Um, but I had heard that she was pregnant and I heard that somewhere around nine o'clock in the morning. And I, you know, then two, three hours went by and they're like, ah, April fools, we're just kidding. But later on um, in the day, I wanted to say congratulations or when are you due? She didn't look pregnant, um, but it was stuck in my head that my teacher's pregnant. And I, I had the April fools, okay? So I knew she wasn't, but I still wanted to say it because I heard it. Um, and luckily I caught myself, but it's like with the flying monkeys when they smear us that's what the people hear because he came to he or she came to them first so that's what they stick in their head that's what they learned is that we're crazy so when we're sitting there trying to undo what they said or defend ourselves the nar um the flying monkeys our support group they're not going to believe us it's just like that pregnancy thing like i said wait what why do i think like i felt it like it was, it was weird how um, things like that stick in your head. Um, and that's what's going to happen. So smearing us takes away our support groups. Um, sometimes they'll stalk us so they can tr control us. Like if you went on a date with someone, they can ruin it. Um, they can, I don't know, track times or locations and use it against you later to uh, harass you or bully you. Sometimes they do it over the internet. Sometimes they do it in person. Um, it can be really, really damaging uh, to your life, to your social network, even to your job sometimes. Triangulation is another thing that they like. Um, and that's bringing the opinion and perspective or threat of another person into the relationship. So they'll use others um, 
to throw things off, whether it's an ex-partner, coworkers, family members, and that helps bolster their claims against you. So they'll start saying to us, you know, everybody knows the things that you do to me. And a narcissist will change the story so that we seem like we are the aggressor. Um, and it just uh, gives the narcissist kind of like a, a free slate, like a free ticket to continue the abuse. Um, because now they got people on their team and it'll invalidate our reaction because now we're the crazy person. We don't know how to handle ourselves. That's what people are going to look at. They're not going to look at why did we react that way? What caused us to do that? That's out of our character. And it starts to put us on the defense. Uh, it makes difficult. It makes it difficult for other people to, to like really see what's going on. Um, and they just uh, are now focused on our reactive abuse, which is reaction to the abuse. Um, and if we try to defend ourselves too much, um, it kind of validates what the narcissist is saying. You know, if we get so frustrated, we scream like a crazy person. Um, hopefully you don't get physical or if you push them away, uh, see, there she goes again, touching me. Um, try not to get physical, but, uh, sometimes, you know, it, it happens. And that's the thing that I really want you guys to be cautious of is that's, that's the, the snowball of these. Like, luckily I was not physically abused. Um, but it can, it can get, you know, where the arguments, uh, they get more and more heated and, and eventually, you know, a lot of people lose their cool because you got to remember these narcissists are in a younger state of mind. And if you look back at kids, kids like to hit uh, or bite or be destructive, throw things. Um, so it, it brings them deeper into their issues um, and a deeper need to get out of those issues. So that's when it, it gets out of hand. So just be careful with that. Um, they uh, will use something called preemptive defense posturing. Uh, where they try to um, show that they're this fake nice person and they paint themselves in, you know, the limelight that, you know, they have these great qualities uh, that it's interesting how they're like, I'm a nice person or I'm too nice. They'll, they'll let us know that uh, they're really caring about people. I would never hurt you. I, I would never hurt anyone. Um, and I love <clears throat> some of you guys, <laughs> not you guys, but in the world, um, and I'm sure girls do it too, but uh, you know, they want to get you into bed or something. And they're like, I, it, for me in my situation where it's like, I'm all about the woman. I don't even need to be pleased. I just want to please you. Or, oh, you don't want to have sex. What well, can I do this to you and, and please you? I don't need anything. And what they want to do is they want to get you naked and vulnerable or even um, aroused. So maybe now you, you slip from your uh, stance and so they can take advantage of it. It's not that they want to please you. Uh, they might want to get off on seeing you naked. They might want to get off on the power that they broke you down because you already said no. So now they know they can get you to change your mind. Um, and that's why, you know, you got to stick to your boundaries uh, because the narcissist will take advantage of it. So uh, they like to bait. They'll often sugarcoat things. Um, you know, sometimes, uh, you know, sometimes we kind of mess with each other and have a little bit of fun. But sometimes if you tell somebody that's like really hurting you and they don't back down, that's abuse. Um, you know, if they do it one or two times, but after a while, it's like going through life with somebody who doesn't listen to what you're saying. If you tell them something hurts, it should be in their heart not to do it anymore. Um, you know, and uh, they often will take our insecurities and maliciously provoke us on purpose. Um, and, and then use this like innocence, like, oh, I didn't mean that. Or I thought you, you know, I thought we were just joking. And it's like, how do you think we're just joking? If I've told you every time you say it, or you see tears in my eyes, um, and they, they don't take things to heart. They, they just get a thrill out of changing our emotions, stealing from us. And like, I keep saying, they'll steal our, our happiness, contentment, whatever it is, um, 
you know, and, and they twist it around like, oh, I, I didn't mean to hurt you. You know, I would never do that because I love you. And um, talking about the I love yous, uh, a lot of times they won't say I love you. They'll be like, I already said it once. You know, I do or, or the way I, you know, pay the bills or the way I pick the kids up from school or, or I cook dinner every Friday. It's like I'm showing you I love you as opposed to, you know, saying it here and there. You know, it's like. Uh, if you're in a relationship and there is love, you should be able to say, I love you and hear it back. Um, it's, it's just a statement of confirmation. It's validating that we're in a safe spot. We both love each other. And it builds on that. That deepens it. It validates things. Um, it gets rid of any insecurities. It's a comfort level. And, you know, um, I could cook for you right now. I'm not in love with you. So a great meal doesn't mean there's love. Um, I could pick your kids up from school. Doesn't mean I want a life with you. So it, it's common courtesy and, and we're trained that to have healthy relationships. Just like if I say, can I have this please? And, and I say, thank you. People should say, you're welcome. It's kind of like a closure, like, you know, not a problem, you know, and we're on the same page that it was respectful. Uh, if I say hi to you, you, you know, um, it's nice that I wanted to say hi to you. That's on me. But it kind of validates um, a camaraderie, whether it's friends or coworker, just like, you know, we acknowledge each other as opposed to it one sided. And they take away the validation for our feelings if we um, uh, and it's not always about being upset. You know, we talk about that a lot. Like we want to make things better. Um, sometimes we just want to meet eye to eye. Like, hey, can we have a picnic with the family this summer for my birthday? And okay, we'll talk about it later. And it's like, like, I don't even care. Just say yes or no. Um, I just thought it'd be a great idea. And they don't communicate things. Um, or they'll be like, do what you want whatever, do what you want. So you're like, okay, cool. Thanks. Um, and so we start planning it and then they resent us. Um, but it's like, you didn't communicate it the right way. You basically, in a sense said, do what you want. So I was like, cool. He's on my side. Um, and so you start planning things and they're mad that you spent money at the picnic. They're mad that you invited so-and-so they're, they're mad that, um, you know, there's too many people in the house or they trampled through your yard when they would just, you know, going to the picnic table or going up to the barbecue for a hamburger. Um, everything gets turned around. And just be aware of the manipulation tactics that they use. Um, you know, this big thing going on right now with Will Smith and Jada Pinkett, um, it, it's really sad to see how destructive the the pain um you know uh one person standing up for the other because they feel they're walking on eggshells and um just pay attention to what's going to happen to them uh i, I don't want to get too deep into it but just to say about the pain that is going on the butt kissing the uh kind of like trapped um they they said uh ride or die uh something like bad marriage for life. It's almost like a joke to them. Like we suck, our, our marriage sucks. We're not gonna work on it. We're just gonna accept that it's terrible. Um, it, it's, the dynamics are terrible. And just like you being with your narcissist, you know, it is addicting, um, but an addiction isn't healthy. No matter what it is, you're addicted to food, uh, addiction to sex, so you're not going to work, or you're risking STDs, addiction to whatever. Sometimes even you know jogging too much. You're you're getting shin splints now. You think it's healthy to run, um, but you're doing it so much that uh, either your weight is off, um, or, or or you're wearing down your knees. You're not doing it the right way um it's just such a damaging relationship to be in so just be aware of the manipulation techniques take a stand stand up for yourself be cautious uh that sometimes doing that 
can upset the narcissist. So if you're going to leave your narcissist, um, you know their personality. Make sure that you do it in a safe way. Uh, if you need to contact the police or have some, um, not really bodyguards, but somebody to back you up, uh, just do it safe or do it when they're not home. And uh, no contact is, is safe. Block them. And uh, good luck to you guys. We can't always um, block everybody in our lives. You know, uh, we want to have relationships with the extended part of certain relationships, you know, like grandkids or nieces and nephews. Um, just limit contact uh, with narcissists. You have to keep it low keel and uh, just love yourself and either limit contact or go no contact. Feel free to let me know if you have any comments or suggestions. One on ones are available and big hugs to you guys. Have a great night.